Hey guys, Compulsion84 here. Today I'm showing off the recording equipment that I use and explaining why I chose it. So you've got four components of a proper microphone setup. You've got the microphone itself, a windscreen over the microphone or a pop filter in front of it, you've got a boom or microphone stand, and finally you've got a shock mount. So I use an Audio-Technica AT2020 USB microphone, a windscreen slash pop filter made by a company called Whisper Technic, I use a Rode PSA1 swivel boom arm. Woo! It's got a reach of about 34 inches. Finally, I use an Audio-Technica 8458 shock mount. So links to all these products are in the video description below. The microphone will run you about 120 bucks. The windscreen is about 20. A cheap pop filter would be 10. This boom arm is about 100 bucks. And finally, the shock mount is about 40 or 45. So I listed those in a specific order for a very good reason. The microphone, pop filter, boom arm, and shock mount. The microphone is the core of this build, and if you buy a cheap mic and put all these accessories on it, it's kind of a waste of money. So even though a pop filter or a windscreen is significantly cheaper than a boom arm or a shock mount, I think they're more important. Without it, you'll have puffs of air, hard P's and B's, and your recordings will just sound like garbage. If someone listens with headphones to someone without a pop filter, they'll probably hate you because of these hard jumps in the sound, harsh levels, clipping your mic. It's just a bad, bad plan. So the pop filter does its job, however it's obtrusive, it kind of gets in the way. Whenever you move your boom arm, you have to move it up or down and constantly readjust it whenever you move the arm. The other thing about the windscreen is, is it lowers background noise for me by about 3 or 5 decibels, which is really nice. So not only does a boom arm put your mic right where you want it horizontally, vertically, and rotation-wise, it also provides some sound isolation and dampening. So a shock mount is there to isolate your mic from the outside world. A good one will have this rubbery, plasticky cord that connects not only against the mic, but against the stand itself to resist vibrations, noise, etc. So if you do have any bumps or vibrations to the boom arm, the floor, or what it's attached to, this will help isolate the mic from that. It will lower the amplitude of the noise made by that disturbance, and it will also help dissipate it more quickly. If you're unfamiliar with dampening, think of it kind of like a spring. So I chose the AT2020 USB because it was the best microphone overall in the $100 to $150 category. It has clear, natural sound, and it's small enough and versatile enough that you can use it with most accessories. So I had a Blue Yeti microphone for a few weeks, and I did like it, but ultimately I returned it because it had some problems. It was so big and bulky that it didn't work with a lot of common accessories. It also had the problem of it was a bit boomy and unnatural, and I, you know, can have some bass in my voice unintentionally, so that coupled with the microphone kind of clipped or sounded bad, and I just, I didn't want that. So on Windows 7, the AT2020 had plenty of range. I used 35 to 40% of Windows volume, and that was great. If I took it any higher, I got heightened sensitivity and picked up junk. In Windows 8 and 10, however, with the Windows audio bug, I have to record at 90 to 95%. So I haven't used this windscreen long enough to determine if my recording quality is better or worse with it compared to a pop filter. So what I can say is it reduces echo and room noise much better than a pop filter. So if I take a very slight hit on recording quality, but I get rid of noise, I think overall the quality is better. So the Rode Boom Arm is used by a lot of people in YouTube and podcasting, and it does a really good job with almost a 3-foot reach. Sometimes the springs can get a little bit noisy, but if you spray a little bit of WD-40 in there, it seems to fix it right up. So the Audio-Technica shock mount I'm using now is better than the old one, although it's significantly more expensive. So the nice thing about the Audio-Technica version is, there's a machined groove in the microphone that the cord slips into, so it's very secure, and I can rotate it whatever direction I want very easily. So this recording setup will give you significantly better audio quality than most people on YouTube. There's prevalent game headset mics, which are usually garbage, and then a lot of $50 or $70 microphones, which are often very good, but this should blow them right out of the water. And I'll be the first one to admit, some of my early videos where I had a crappy microphone and I didn't know how to do post-processing and Audacity, they sound horrible. It's like nails in a chalkboard, and you know, I'm almost, I'm like ashamed of it, but I can't go back and fix it, so... You know, as I go on, I just keep building better quality videos, try to improve my recording, get better at post-processing, and just make a better quality product. And don't get me wrong, the $50 microphones like the Blue Snowballs are great, but if you're going to build a full setup with a shock mount, boom arm, etc., it makes a lot more sense to me to go to that $100 to $150 category and get a much better sounding mic. And if you've got a lot of money to spend, jump to that $200 to $400 and just get some crazy shit. So I'm not an audio engineer, but I did a ton of research before I bought these products, and I've done a lot of testing and tweaking to try to get the best possible audio recordings I can, and I think this is a very good setup if you want to really jump into audio recording on YouTube or podcasting. If you decide to purchase any of these products, please use my Amazon affiliate links below. 
So if you have any questions about this equipment, please post it down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. I'm Compulsion84 and I make gun, gaming, and gadget videos. Please uh, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this, and as always, thank you for watching.